We acknowledge the First Nations people as the traditional custodians of the land we are on today. We acknowledge and pay respect to all elders past, present and emerging. The Now in the Future podcast is an exciting way of sharing members' stories of opportunities, challenges and provide support and expert advice for Down Syndrome community. Down Syndrome Queensland's vision is to support, advocate for empower people with Down Syndrome to take their rightful places as valuable and contributing members of their community both now into the future. Hello and welcome to today's episode which will be shining a light on an exciting new program here at DSQ called Get Active. My name is Tanya and I'm the Early Years Officer here at Down Syndrome Queensland and I often hear families talking about how hard it can be to find the right extracurricular activities for their little ones with Down Syndrome. Just like their siblings and peers, children with Down Syndrome want to be part of a range of sporting or recreational activities. We know that being part of such activities gives a sense of belonging, connection to community and provides an opportunity to develop new skills whilst also making a wider group of friends. So when families contact DSQ and want to know about where to find particular groups for people with Down syndrome, we usually start off by asking where they've tried first in their local area rather than looking for something that's disability specific. Today we're going to chat with Liz Willis, who is um, our worker in our Get Active program, and she's going to share more with us about the aims of this program and how you or your family member might like to get involved. So hi Liz, I wondered if you could tell us a little bit more about yourself and the role that you're doing and also Get Active. Thank you so much, Tanya. I'm very, very excited to be here. Uh, So my program, Get Active, is an education program. So we are all about educating uh, local sport and um, physical activity providers in their awareness and their capabilities to provide that inclusive leisure um, through their programs. So we're aimed specifically at grassroots programs um, and we're working to educate our coaches just on inclusion, how we can um, run our sport our understandings much better um, so that everyone is included um, just at that mainstream level in mm-hmm. predominantly in the grassroots level if we can capture people right from the word go then um, we we hope that we can break those barriers right from the start and then we can progress it right through it. everyone's uh, sporting career and that really mirrors what we're aiming for in the rest of community isn't it like we we see inclusive education having such a focus these days children going to their local state school um so it makes complete sense for children to join their local sporting communities absolutely yeah Yeah, definitely it's um it's very 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 exciting um we We're also very, very excited to bring on board some athlete and coach ambassadors so that we can show everyone that anything is possible. So no matter what your dream is, um, it's possible. If you want to represent Australia, we can help you. If you want to find a swimming club with an inclusive coach that understands your needs and will put your child in with everyone else, then that's what we're here for too. So no dream is too small and no dreams too big. (laughs) And we will hear later on in this episode from um, a couple of those ambassadors. So stay tuned for that. But I guess um, I'm wondering, do you have, when coaches reach out to you, do they often have particular worries in terms of how they achieve this for young ones? Yeah, absolutely. So um, a lot of people just don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So they want to, they want to become involved and it's so exciting when someone actually does reach out or if I reach out to a club and they're willing Mm -hmm. to have us come in so it's basically where do I start how do I start what do I do I've got some knowledge on intellectual disability but I really I just don't know what to do so that's where we come in we'll run workshops with one coach or 50 coaches it doesn't matter Uh, and then we have resource kits so that you've got a little booklet on hand at any time obviously every child is different but with those key little bits of help, little drills, understanding the disability that the child has. It's, it's, it's just imperative to any kind of success within a club, really. 
That's fantastic. Yeah. And I would imagine um, families would much prefer to just be tapping into, you know, yeah. the club that their other children or the other oh, children yeah. in the class that their, yeah. their friends. That's exactly it. Like it's, it, it doesn't need to be this, it doesn't have to all be segregated. Mm. Kids could go to their local swimming club, their local AFL club, their local netball club. Mm. Um, with that education, education is key. Mm. Uh, knowledge is power. So if we can get everyone understanding, look, we can coach, but it's just modify things a little bit like you would do for any child, any adult, really. And how long can the Get Active support that your program provides stay alongside a club or a coach? Oh, look, um, as long as we need. We're grant funded up until uh, next December. Uh, hopefully we will be able to keep this going, but it's through the whole process. So it's initially from that first phone call, I need help, or I reach out, uh, and then it's ongoing. So... Um, that's the beauty of this program is I've got I've got the knowledge, but then I can put you off to the ambassador as well who can yeah. give you that very specific coaching coaching knowledge because I'm not an expert in all sports, unfortunately. <laughs> and I guess that's that's the key point, isn't it, that if a coach wanted to speak to somebody else who's been through that yes. at that coach kind of level, yeah. um, you can do that. Yeah. You, can, you can give them some of that peer yeah. support and yeah. mentoring. Absolutely. That's the thing. That's what I find within the community. There isn't that network that we've mm-hmm. got set up yet to have, oh, wait a minute, how do I run this drill? How can I run this a little bit differently? Or mm. um, it keeps jumping into the pool. What can I do to include these kids? So, this is wonderful. Yeah. And for our regional listeners, you would be connecting with them by phone and Zoom, yeah, I would, imma- I would absolutely. imagine. And yeah, it'll coaching. be by Zoom, but I can. Um, we can work it into the schedule so that I can come up and I can run coaching workshops anywhere in Queensland basically and so benefit a whole range of people at definitely once, yeah bring the whole community together why not <laughs> <laughs> sounds wonderful yeah. and so um, we will shortly hear from some people who have already joined this program as ambassadors which is really wonderful to hear but just quickly Liz how would people get in contact with you if they yeah, wanted to too easy so um, we have a website it's uh, get active .net.au uh, you can reach out to me that way or via email which is getactive uh, at downsyndromequeensland.org.au so getactive is all one word at yep. Down Down syndrome syndrome. QLD. Yep. You got it. But again, if you go to the website, which is getactive.net.au, yep. the details would yep. be you on can there. Just as click well. the link and get in contact with me that way. And yeah. failing all of that, call us at the office on 07 3356 6655, and you will also manage to get put through to Liz. So thank you so much, Liz. And um, I'm wondering if you just wanted to give us a little bit of background about the ambassadors we're going to hear from. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we're very excited. Excited. We have um, Ethan, who is an Australian champion uh, in athletics. Um, he is a short distance runner and also shot put and long jump are his forte. Uh, Ethan started out um, athletics. Sports sort of has changed his life. So he he has grown in confidence just exponentially. He is in mainstream um, sporting pursuits now and he's got he's studying a cert two in hospitality as well so he's just coming leaps and bounds sport has really changed his world uh, and his coach um daniel he's referred to as sticks we'll hear from him but sticks has just brought him from just strength to strength strength in his sporting career so both of these guys are an absolute wealth of knowledge so sounds like we've got real wisdom that we're about to absolutely <laughs> <laughs> let's get on to that now Now, today we've got an exciting interview with our newest member of the Get Active team, our athlete ambassador, Ethan Parry. Hi, Ethan. Hey. How are you today? That's good. I believe you're off to have a bit of an exciting weekend after this. Oh, yeah. Where are you off to? Um, Townsville. Another competition? Oh, yeah. So, um, competing in the 100, um, job board in a long job. Wow, shot put. Yeah. I'm I'm in awe. That's a really hard sport. Yeah. yeah. I've I've heard that you've been an athlete for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, most of your life by the sounds of things. Yeah. I'm wondering what do you love about being an athlete? Hmm. This makes me feel strong. Get happy. Strong and happy. Um also I gotta get meat. Lots new people. Ah, some new friends. 
So I get to travel to another places. That makes me feel loved. Yeah, I bet it does. Yeah. I'm I'm picturing your bedroom at home is full of prizes and trophies and awards and things. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a favourite award that you've won? Um, my favourite award is going to be uh, 100. 100 metres yeah. sprinting. So you've been competing for a long time now in lots of different sports as an athlete. You've yeah. mentioned shot put and running. Are there other sports you do as well? Um, I could um, to um, do my own job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I believe you do some basketball oh, as well. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to be the fastest man in the world. You want to be the fastest man in the world? Yeah. Are you heading towards the Olympics, do you think? Oh, uh, yeah. Is that the dream? Yeah. Now, I know you're going to be an ambassador with us and you've got your amazing shirt on today and yeah. your badge. Yeah. Um, and, Mum, you're happy to own Liz. You can join this conversation too. What are the things we're hoping to do in your time as an ambassador? I have to be a basketball. Ethan, do you think that maybe you might show other kids with Down syndrome that they can compete in athletics or mm. any other kind of sport? Yeah, it's good active. Yeah, and you might help them and yeah, it's good maybe them. coach them a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever thought about becoming a coach like Sticks? Um, or just maybe. a runner. Yeah. Just a runner. Yeah. You want to get all the awards and the prizes. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe one day you can help other kids do that too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wondering what advice you might have for other young people who might be thinking about yes. joining a sport. Um, I was there for um, so I love to um, play a sport. Makes fun. It keeps you healthy. Yeah. Can you be hard work? But will change. Hmm, it's your life, like, yeah, to be changed my life. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's wonderful. I like that you said that it keeps you healthy. Yeah. I think that's so important, isn't it? Yeah. Getting hmm. outside and playing. Yeah, getting outside playing a sport. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really good, really good. What you love about being an athlete, Ethan? I wonder if you could share a little um, bit. I want to get big guns and strong like that. <laughs> you want to get big guns? <laughs> yes. I've seen your gun shot. It's pretty cool, mate. Yeah. Well, yeah, there we go. Scary. Pretty good motivation. <laughs> Shame it's not a video podcast. Oh, it's I know. It's got some guns. <laughs> Maybe we can put some up on our social media when this yeah. episode comes out. Yeah. <laughs> Would that be okay? Um, just proud. Yeah, yeah, it makes you happy to be doing sport. Watching lots of fun. Lots of fun, yeah, yeah. All that time with your friends yeah. would be great. Yeah, my friends could be so happy for me. Yes, they would be proud of you as well. Not to mention mum, and we'll hear from mum soon about yeah. that. <laughs> um, I was there for a... Um, Said to mom, and he said, uh, yeah, it's going to be good in this playing sport. It's going to be behind you. It's not going to do that. Mm. And I reckon your mum's probably made heaps of friends through your sport as well. Met oh, lots yeah. of people mom's along the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she's always watching you. Yeah, always I watching you. <laughs> and I'm <also> watching. <laughs> and you mentioned travel too as another part. Yes. That you love. Have you got a favourite place that you've ever been to with your sport? Mm. My favourite is going to be a chance for. So I love that place. Yeah. Well, you 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 said earlier that you're 17 now. Yes. So does that mean that you're nearly finished school, or have you got a little while to go? One um, more year. One more year. Oh wow! So you're 11 at the moment. Yes. Mm. What's the plan after school? Um. Next year, it will be uh, year 12. Mm, yep, yep. Is it um, hard fitting in all the sport around your schoolwork? Oh, uh, yeah. My work is um, it's good, pretty good work um, in the school. I do a lot of stuff. Um, 
my work stuff. So I could do um, an IE. So I really do that with um, my teachers. Yeah. Like, um, it has helped them. So, Ethan, can you tell me who else is one of your favourite athletes? Um, who else do you look up to? Ash Maloney. Ash Maloney. Can you tell me a little bit about Ash? Why do um, you like him so much? Ash Maloney is a, he was a hero. Yeah. So, so I love to be like him. Yep. Is he the decathlon? Yeah. Is he in the decathlon? Yeah. And did he win a medal at the last Olympics? I. Uh, yeah. He's yeah. got some flu bombs. Yeah. He got the bronze in Tokyo, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tokyo, yeah. That's incredible. And I was him down here in, in town school. Oh, you're going to see him? Yeah. Oh, maybe get an autograph? Yeah. Photo. You've got to get a selfie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He might even want a selfie with you. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a shot to get all your guns yeah. out together yeah. and get, get a, a great pick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's yeah. great. So you, you, by being a sporting athlete yourself, you get to meet all these amazing people too. Yeah. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah. Awesome. Well, so now we're going to have a chat with Ethan's mum, Gail, just to hear about, um, I guess, the journey of a parent behind a budding athlete and mm. all of the journeys that you've been on, I would imagine, over the years with Ethan. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how you first supported Ethan to get into sports? Yeah, well, I come from a sporting family and my other children are sporty as well, so I just wanted Ethan to get involved in some sort of sport as well and um, athletics was part of my history and um, it was pretty daunting in the beginning to put Ethan in a team sport so I thought you know athletics would be nice and safe so he tried that for a while and didn't like running very much when he was about eight and nine years old so he had a break and tried a few other sports like basketball and Oztag and then discovered he really enjoyed especially sprinting the 100 metres and um, we started training in the backyard and out of the blue um, we heard about the Global Games and he was invited to compete there in 2018 and it really started then yeah. when he was 15. Wow. Okay, so it sounds like the last few years things have really taken off but it sounds like this has been something that's been important as a family and, and yeah. it sounds like it's just been around giving lots of opportunities to all of your children to try out different things. That's it, yeah. We had a rule that they had to do one sport in their curricul extracurricular activities and yeah. it was up to them what they decided to choose. So Yeah, yeah. And did you find initially, um, you mentioned earlier a few, like initially running wasn't really something that Ethan liked but he mm. persevered and with encouragement obviously found his amazing strengths. Mm. Um, were there any other challenges initially like in, in terms of getting into sports or...? Were, yeah, I guess just in terms of sometimes we hear it in the office here, um, other families saying they've tried, mm. you know, to enrol children in different activities and other people's perceptions are that this is going to be tricky. Um, what did you experience? Yeah, we've had a mixed bag of experiences, mm. some negative as well as positive, mm. and I think you just have to focus on the positive yeah. Um, influences and find something that fits your child and mm. and your lifestyle, I guess. Um, team sports we found particularly tricky because Ethan wasn't always treated mm. the same as others in the team. Mm. So athletics for him meant that he could shine on his own and, mm. you know, he trains with a squad and yeah. there are opportunities to have that socialization still with other mm. athletes when you go to competitions mm. and you're training yeah. so we found that the socialization was also important not just the sport itself but to get yeah. him involved in community yeah. and to you know grow in other areas of his life was also really important and athletics has offered that for for Ethan yeah definitely and I think it's really important for the whole community to see that People with disabilities want everything that everybody else does and that they can do so well at everything as that's well. Right. I yeah. think that's what I love most about your story, Ethan, is that the world yes. seeing that we have to believe that everybody has mm. a place um, in sports and activities the same as their siblings and their classmates. And, yeah. yeah. 
That's it. And you just have to get out there and have a go. You do. You do. And you mentioned too earlier even that it's it keeps you healthy as yes. well. And I just think that's really Being important. Healthy, get active. Yeah. Better than sitting in front of the telly, hey? Yeah. I mean, you're sitting down in the work. It. No, just get active. Get up. Go yes. to sport. Yes. I bet you feel better afterwards. Even if you feel like having a sleep in, I bet you feel better afterwards. Oh, yes. You do, yeah. Ethan yeah. sleeps very well after a hard training session, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> that's the job of a teenager too, isn't it? Mm, Excelling yes. at sleep and... <laughs> Especially after 8 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And um, I guess... What it, would do? You have any advice for any other parents? You know, when they if they are experiencing some of those initial challenges too. You know, um, it sounds like you've your motto's been just keep going and keep giving it a go. But is there any other advice you'd have? Yeah, I think if you're having some negative experiences, go and talk to the the club mm-hmm. coaches and the volunteers to see if they can make any changes or allowances Mm -hmm. or you know accommodate for your child's needs in any way Mm -hmm. Um, and if that doesn't work then find something that does work for you and your family because it's really important that they enjoy what they're doing and that the atmosphere is positive Mm -hmm. and um, we've seen a really big difference in Ethan since he's been doing athletics it really has changed his life in so many positive ways Mm -hmm. and it's given him you know goal and purpose and drive that we've never seen in him before so that's been really beautiful to watch him grow and develop in that way yeah and the beautiful thing I think too is yes he's got one more year at school but when you've got such amazing interests like that you've got something that just continues on whereas a lot of children get to the end of high school and go what next it sounds like Ethan's got big goals yes he's um he said he's going to be a professional athlete when he gets older and also work at Den and Steph. So they've taken him on. <gasps> From My Kitchen Rules. That's oh, right. Oh, brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. It's your part-time job, right, mate? Yes. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How do you fit all this in every day? <laughs> uh, also, I work out Monday and Saturday. Yeah. Gosh, a part-time job and a full-on athletics yes. career in the making and school. Yeah. Your mum and dad must be doing a lot of driving. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not I'll Ethan's thing to think mom. about. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Um, is there anything else that you would like to share, Gail, around? No. no. Sorry, Ethan? It was driving to work. Yeah, we drive you to work. Yeah. As well as training. Yeah, as well as school? Yeah, yeah, as well as school and competitions, but it's yeah. all worth it, isn't it? I bet that family photo album is huge (laughs) (laughs) of all the different places and activities. Yeah. Yeah. We hope to see the world, don't we? Visit lots of places with your athletics in the future. Yeah, yeah. And and those places and opportunities that you probably would never have had had you not. That's right. And when you walk the red carpet, you walk with mum. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's pretty amazing. Yeah. Any- it's such an important part of life, you know, and it, it's given Ethan a platform to shine and yeah. everybody needs that. Absolutely. Now that we've listened about Ethan's experiences as an athlete ambassador and heard from his mum, Gail, we thought we'd love to talk to you, Sticks, because... My understanding is that you're the coach behind this budding, emerging, amazing athlete that we have in the room. So we thought we'd ask um, if you could just tell us a little bit more about how you've supported Ethan along his athletics journey. Um, yeah, so I'm Ethan's uh, athletics coach. Um, it's no different to any other athlete, to be honest. And I guess you know each other so well now that you know the best um, ways to support him to achieve his goals. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've got two kids and I very much found out that everyone's got a currency. Yep. Uh, and it's just about figuring out what that currency is and yeah. utilising that to yeah. best achieve desired outcomes. Yeah. It sounds like from talking to Ethan earlier that getting big guns is one of his <laughs> mm. <laughs> motivating factors. But yes. what, what else are you seeing as a coach that works for 
Um, well, a couple of weeks ago, I was actually looking back through some of the news stuff that we did and his very first one to his last one, is, it, it's amazing, the growth. Um, I say to his mum, Gail, that it's, if there's something doesn't have an athletic benefit, it will have a life benefit. So my job is to make myself redundant, essentially. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. And what about um, advice for other coaches who might have, you know, a younger child starting out with them, you know, and, and maybe that coach hasn't coached a person with a disability before? Have you got any thoughts on how they should embrace that opportunity and what might help? Yeah, I get this question a lot, actually. <laughs> It's, it's not so much about uh, the, the end state, it's more about the journey. Um, and if you can sit down, have a cuppa or a coffee or um, whatever your cho- choice of beverage is um, with that person um, and just explain what you want to achieve. Yeah. Um, Honestly, athletics is an auxiliary to what I want to achieve or I want Ethan to achieve. Like Mm -hmm. him getting out and working without Mm -hmm. any assistance and stuff is is a huge, huge milestone. Mm -hmm. Um, And the athletic stuff is just a bonus. It's it's a pastime. Yeah. And actually Ethan mentioned that when he talked about the things that he gets out of it. Like he had a whole range of... It wasn't just around the fitness and and being the best at your abilities. It was also around the travel that he gets to do and the people that he gets to meet and the friends that he makes. Yeah, Yeah. so athletics is more of a a vessel, I suppose, um, Mm -hmm. to achieve getting out of your comfort zone, um, if it's raining, training in the rain so building resilience yeah there's there's all those other little things that go into it um but yeah for for any aspiring coach that is looking at taking on i should never be using that word taking it on like working with a range of different abilities yeah yeah, i think this is an important conversation to have because i'm not at all sporty Mm. in my role as early years officer i hear from families all the time that talk a lot about the some of the challenges that gail said that they faced initially um other people's perceptions of you know um oh this will be harder or this will be different or i won't have the skills but really knowing that we what we know about what every young athlete gets out of being part of a sport or an activity yeah. um i feel like it's about breaking down those barriers and saying yeah, let's definitely. not focus on the difference yeah exactly because everyone's different mm. everyone yeah um we're all going to have different levels of fitness different coordination everything's going to be different yeah but the fear of the unknown is the ultimate fear. Mm. And that's probably what most coaches come to where they go, oh, uh, I don't know. Mm. Like, so they don't want to set themselves up for failure when really mm. they could actually be setting themselves up for great success. Yeah. Do you think it's about, I don't know, in the Australian culture there is that real sense of competitiveness and so people often look at, you know, barriers around that rather than looking at, um, like Ethan talked a lot about those personal, you know, like working on all the things he wants to get better at. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that's, do you think, do you see that in terms of team sports, particularly people just being so competitive, competitive. losing sight of the personal benefits of I, being? In a competitive realm, I think even competitive people, if they were to watch it back, Mm. get caught up in the moment, there's adrenaline, there's endorphins, there's so many chemicals. Mm. And like lash out or they might get angry with a fellow um, teammate or and then they'll look back and they go, oh, geez, that, that probably wasn't my best moment. Mm. Um, I think that's more of, a, um, more of a point that, yes, we are competitive, but we should be inclusive. Mm. Um, yeah. 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 And that we know, we know there's so much evidence today that um, kids today are nowhere near as active as they were 20, 30 years ago. Yeah. And, and, you know, trying to encourage as many young people as possible to be involved in this for all the reasons even talked about fitness, staying healthy, friendships, yeah, and all that. Um, yeah. So I think it's important that you talk about it needing to be inclusive. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Um, and, because even, 
even I've got juniors that come through and their first carnival, they'll um and ah and go, oh, am I good enough? Like, mm. it's it's not about being good enough. It's racing the clock or jumping mm. the distance, your, your yeah. PBs and yeah. bettering yourself every time. It's not, yes, it, there's competitiveness, but there's a healthy way to be competitive. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I guess it's about the goals that you set for yourself exactly. too, isn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Like if you're a very um, uh, goals orientated person, then you've got to look at what those goals are, because medals collect dust, memories will last forever, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, like as a coach, I'm—I mm-hmm. don't know—I get a bit invested, but I feel like I'm having huge impact on Ethan. Yeah. Like I'm. Um, his home away from home, essentially. Mm. Um, and I think I'm doing an all right job. What do you reckon, Ethan? Yes. Good coach. Good Sorry, coach. I was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I'll give an eye, my homie. Yeah. <laughs> Fist bumps going on here. <laughs> yeah. And it sounds like you have gotten so much out of this experience as well. I think that's yeah, the thing in your coaches. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, um, yeah. I remember when Gail first asked and I was like, yeah. No drama. Like, what, yeah. what's the question? You want me to take on another athlete? Yeah, like, yeah. But I think she might have, I don't know, I might be speaking for you, but um, <laughs> might have made it to be bigger than what it was. Yeah. And I think a lot of people would be in the same boat. Like, yeah. it's it's not been her. Like, it's no. not a mammoth thing. No. And, and if a coach turns you away, is that really who you want in putting into your young person's life anyway? Exactly. Keep like, going. That, and that was the message from Gail was like, you just keep trying different sports and different places yeah, exactly. until you find what works. Before we finish up, Liz, as our Get Active coordinator, is there anything you would like to ask Sticks about, um, you know, messages for other coaches that we might be trying to get on board? Yeah, I think I think that's the biggest thing. I think that What's sort of the message that you as an ambassador can can get out there to other coaches that I reach out to in clubs and, and they say, no, it's too hard. I mean, we've probably been over it a little bit, but yeah. what can what can they do? And obviously we can reach out to you, but what's the message? Yeah, definitely. Coaches? I'm an open book, so anyone can um, get in touch with me at any time. Yeah. I think we're too hung up on labels yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah. in today's society yeah. and a push button society as well everything's at a push of a button you want news it's right mm. there you want anything yeah um you've got to be invested and i think most coaches are invested yeah. it's just that fear of the unknown yeah and maybe just being open to look at things a little bit you know yeah different. differently again and yeah, yeah just different focus. yeah challenge the norm sort of thing all right thank you so much for sharing all this today it's wonderful that we've got people like that that we can connect, you know, Liz can connect um, prospective coaches with and, and um, yeah, just awesome to to sit back and say, look, we've done this. This was yeah, no yeah, big yeah. deal. You can do this too. Exactly. Yeah. And that is the thing. It's no big deal. Yeah. It's really isn't. Yeah, yeah. Thanks so much for everything that you've all shared today. Any last-minute comments from anybody? <laughs> Mum, yeah. i just like to say that um, sticks as a coach is focused really on his relationship with Ethan and building that foundation has been really important for their journey forward. And if you've got a coach out there who's willing to invest in your child as a person first, then that's one step in the right direction. You know, that's that's um, definitely very important that they can have open communication and that you've got an advocate for your son or daughter. Mm-hmm. And um yeah, I think the rest just flows from that. But a good relationship is the foundation of a of a good athlete and coach relationship. And I think so well said, Gail, because that's yeah. for so many parts of life, isn't it? Whether it's, you know, in the education space, in the workplace, yeah, you definitely. know, having that right relationship is everything. Thanks so much, everybody. Thanks. You have been listening to the Now and the Future podcast. For more information about this episode and many other topics related to Down syndrome, please visit the Down syndrome Queensland website at downsyndrome.org.au slash QRD. Down syndrome Queensland, supporting people with Down syndrome now and into the future.